Uh, U.S. Steel shares taking a tumble on Wednesday on the heels of a report that the Biden administration is expected to block its sale to a Japanese buyer. Stocks dropping by more than 17 percent over the news. The White House is ready to stop Japan's Nippon Steel from taking over the U.S. firm. Donald Trump and Kamala Harris have both come out against this deal. Here to share his insights, we have Dennis Neal this morning, media strategist and former managing editor of Forbes and host of the podcast, What's Bugging Me? Uh, good morning to you, Dennis. Thank you so much for your time this morning. Sure. Good morning to you and welcome back. I understand you're coming. You're, you're back in business. Uh, yes. So I must feel great. It, it feels good. I'm shaking the dust off this week. Uh, so appreciate your time and uh, being with me this morning. Let's talk about the impacts this could have specifically in Pennsylvania, right, where U.S. Steel headquarters are. Why do you think the Biden administration is taking action now in a swing state? Yeah. What a nice softball setup that you guys wrote, right? Because the reason Biden's taking action now is because Harris will lose the election if they lose Pennsylvania. The union for the steel workers has come out against this deal. They want another bidder, a smaller U.S. company to do that. And what there's many things troubling about this. First of all, this is not China, our biggest enemy in the world, really, trying to buy U.S. steel. This is Japan, our ally of, what, 50, 60, 70 years or more, and we're going to stop it. A second reason to worry about it is U.S. Steel is only the number third maker in America, and the company was going with what it felt was the best choice. And now Biden has let it be known for months that he opposes this deal, right, because the United Steelworkers opposes this deal. But you know what? The U.S. military and all of its orders of steel— amount to only 3% of nationwide production of steel. Why are they blocking this? They're doing it for politics. Now, for Trump, I think he's less about politics because he doesn't have a lot of hope of winning the union vote, I don't think, over there in the steel country. I think Trump opposes it because he just grew up in an era where the idea of foreign ownership of this major engine of American manufacturing would be anathema and terrible. Sometimes, you know, a deal like this is to... Let your company get bigger and stronger and survive. And this company's management, the experts have said that's what they want to do. Now, yeah. and the speaking president of, technically, yeah, go ahead. No, I was just going to say, I mean, both of these candidates, right? I mean, Vice President Kamala Harris and Trump say an American steel company should remain American owned and operated with leaders on both sides of the aisle against the deal. What are the chances this thing even goes through? I think the chances are really good, frankly, because there's this thing called the law that you have to follow. And the law will say that, hey, this is not just a domestic steel market and you want to look at concentration there. This is a global market and every player has to compete against players in other countries. And so you look at it on that scale. This is an administration that has lost almost every major case that they have opposed. And the Federal Trade Commission under Lena Khan keeps getting thrown out of court for their arguments. And I believe that this deal will be approved. It is not anti-competitive. This deal makes U.S. Steel more competitive. It's unfortunate that politics get in the way. You know, by law, the, 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 the president can't take a stance until he it's a recommendation from this co committee called CFIUS. Well, CFIUS finally is making the recommendation, and gee, they work for the president. So, what do you think they're going to yeah. recommend, knowing that he wants yeah. to, you know, kill the deal? And we saw a lot of those U.S. steel workers marching outside of the factory, right, asking for this merger to go through. So, uh, we'll we'll wait to see what happens there. Lastly, I want to turn to some of the uh, economic plans of Donald Trump and Kamala Harris. The 45th president promising to cut taxes and end taxes on tips, as well as pledging not to make cuts to Social Security and Medicare, uh, all while making IVF treatments free, launching a new mass deportation program. Can the country afford to pay for all of these campaign promises, Dennis? Well, it's interesting that you zoom up on Trump and those promises when the Biden administration has been continuing spending at $7 trillion a year. We were at $4 trillion before COVID. And then the government went up to $7 trillion and they've stayed there. And damn the torpedoes, who cares the consequences? I mean, both parties spend way too much in Washington. This whole idea of we need to raise taxes on the rich. I mean, no, we need to spend less money. But instead, we're spending at crisis levels. It's craziness. And no, they really can't afford a lot of this. Although a lot of these things, understand when Trump cut taxes and the Democrats 
you know, decried that as a terrible thing. When he cut taxes, the amount of money that came in in tax revenue went up 48 percent. Thanks for watching, everybody. Go to joinnn.com to find News Nation on your television provider. Also, don't forget to click that red subscribe button below to get more of News Nation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.